It's good news in this episode. The engine is back in the Duetto Spider. In the last episode, I had the engine out for a gearbox rebuild, but it's all back and working well. This is a good opportunity to talk about setting up the Weber DCOE 40 carburetors. A friend has been asking for this video for a while, so I thought on this Sunday afternoon, I'd get into the topic of setting up DCOEs for an Alpha 105. I can't show you how to fine tune them, but I think we can get it into the ballpark. Assuming the fuel pressure is correct at about 2 to 3 psi, the first thing I want to check is the float level. I'm going to remove the jet cover on the carburetor and then remove a main jet assembly. With that out, I can run the engine for a little bit and get the fuel level to settle. This bit gets a bit tricky. Using a vernier caliper, I'll measure the distance from the machined surface within the carburetor body down to the fuel level in the jet well. A phone light works pretty well to see when the tail has hit the fuel. You'll see the reflection of the light change. The fuel should be 29 millimeters from the surface of the machine face, give or take 0.5 millimeters in each direction. The floats on the Duetta are great, but if they're not, the way to move the float level is by adjusting the brass floats within the carburetor. The standard setting for brass floats on Alpha 105s is 8.5mm from the upper face of the carb cover, with 6mm of travel, but it's a good idea to re-measure the actual level within the carburetor once it's assembled. I've checked both carburetors in the Duetto, and I'm really happy, so I'm going to move on to synchronization. I have a simple trick for getting the front and rear carburetor in sync. It's easier to film this with a set of loose carburetors. On each barrel of a DCOE, there is a cover for the progression drillings, which fuel the car at partial throttle. If you look through these holes, you can see the edge of the throttle valve. I start by opening the throttles on the idle speed screw, just enough to get the throttle valve on the rear carburetor halfway between two of the progression holes, with 50% of the hole showing throttle plate and the other 50% open. Then on the front carburetor, I can adjust the position of the throttle using the screw on the linkage and set it to the exact same spot halfway between two of the holes. Once both carburetors show the exact same pattern, I can back out that idle speed screw and the carburetor should be in sync. Now, with a standard car running standard jets with the float level and synchronization set, the idle mixture screw should be about one turn to one and a half turns from seated. The Duetto is set to one turn. It should be good enough for it to start an idle, but I'm not great at setting idle by ear, so I cheat using a color tune to get it perfect but one turn to one and a half should be enough. To double check the sync between the carbs, you can listen to each carburetor through a length of fuel hose. This is not a myth, it actually works. If there's a difference in airflow between the front and rear carburetors, you'll hear it as a difference in tone but the Duetto sounds pretty even. Now this car is set up well enough to start test driving. It's not finely tuned, but it's a good base to work from in to improve. So I'll leave it here for today. Thanks for checking out this edition of the Sunday Technical. I'll be back this coming week with the first episode in a whole new series. So as always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.